It doesn't. Penis is what boys have down in front. It's fabulously freaky. Live from a dumpy condo, we like to call KDK Studios. KDK's lunatic friend is on the air. Another fine edition of Katie Gay's Lunatic Friend. And I'm going to be quiet for a moment to see if you can hear what I can hear in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but the guy upstairs is blasting his music. And, you know, it's so bad that if I put my hand on the wall, I can feel it vibrate from his room. <laughs> the walls are so thin around here. Anyway, thank you. Welcome to my program. I am the KDK, and this is my lunatic friend. I have some new prank calls that I'm going to play for you tonight. I have three brand new, nobody's ever heard them before, Gladys Ridgeford soundboard calls. And these are pretty good, because these are the first ones that I've done. All the ones up until now have been done by Keith, but I did the new ones, and I think they came out pretty good. So I'll play those throughout the program. I have some new commercials that I've produced for Ted Webb. Ted doesn't even know this yet. I haven't even told Ted about this yet. So, well, let me play one now, and I guess um, Ted will be hearing it for the, the first time along with everybody else. <laughs> Hello, this is Ed, and you might know me from Ted Webb, but you know my favorite thing about Ted Webb is Katie Kay's Lunatic Fringe. It happens every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I, I stay up late every Saturday and listen in my underwear. It's about 30 seconds long, which might be a little too long. I don't know. Give me some feedback in the chat room. What do you guys think of my, my first intro there, the Edgar intro? <laughs> let, me, let me know what you think. <clears throat> Hello, this is Prank Caller D from KDK Prank Calls, inviting you to listen to Ted Webb each and every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for KDK's Lunatic Fringe, live internet talk radio where we do live prank calls, we take ideas from the listeners for prank calls, we play prank calls from the prank call underground, and we generally get drunk and have a good time. So join us, won't you? And that's the one that I like the least. I also have some numbers from Raw Milk. And these are all confirmed angry old men and women. So they're pre-confirmed working numbers for angry old men and women. So we can look forward to that later in the program. Uh, and Redneck says he edited some calls from some previous shows. And um, that's awesome. He got five pranks from two weeks ago. And he's asked me should he send them through IRC. And I'll say, sure. Mr. Peepers has a bunch of numbers for us. Rocco Harry has Shabad Ganis Rael, Harry Thumper, UFO Butt Up. <laughs> Amos Twat, that's an old favorite. Ken Iwatati, Iwatate. Terry Chugga Chop, Chugga Chop. Bubba Tucker, Norbert Butlier. Heinz Butler, Chicka Pussy, Cleopatra Pussy. Those are some old ones. Dick Tracy, Dick Little, Charles Fucker, Joe Mama, Bet Boot. Betty Booty, <laughs> Harry Balzac, Conrad Harrias, Vicky Virgin. <laughs> oh, man. Mr. Bieber says, it was pretty fun at the end there. It's fun looking for goofy names, isn't it? Okay, let me see if I can accept this and put it in the right... Oh, these are waves. Let 
There's a small program called DB Power Amp that you can use to easily convert waves to MP3. And it's free. You can find it at download.com. Just a tip. Oh, well, don't, don't send them all at once, because then you're going to end up tying up the computer so bad that it slows me down, and I don't want to be buffering. If I'm buffering, people get mad. <laughs> Ah, man. Pardon me while I accept number three. File number three. And four. Oh, Christ. Hello, this is Joe Rosenthal inviting you to listen along with me to my favorite internet radio show, KDK's Lunatic Fringe, every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on TechWeb. What the hell is this? The cry out loud, somebody throw a pie! Okay, and then we have... Neo's numbers coming in. These are hard to read tonight. Hmm. Jamel Huntbatch. You know, the ones I can't pronounce, I'm just going to skip here. Shanker Kanath. Christelle Kantat. Natasha Mongolo. E. Sun Skipper. Ed Fingerling. <laughs> Latisa Pinkerton. Philomena Bertai. Melanie Fennell. Thelmo Panola. You know, I was editing one of the programs the other week, and I was listening to this part of the program where I'm reading off goofy names, and I'm wondering what people would think if they just tuned in at that moment and just heard me reading off goofy names. In case you just tuned in, I'm reading off numbers that people are sending me in for possible calls later in the program tonight. <clears throat> where did I leave off? <laughs> Teofil Panol. Thelmo Panola. Hugo Tanawaki, Mary Spankroy, Mabella Tankawan, Dagoberto Pinol, Latisa Pinkerton. I did that one already. And who else? Andrew Excess says, um, Aha. Uh -huh. Excess Sucks Black Cock has joined, but is a clone of. The usual suspect. Let me go back to the chat room. And oh, I guess XS isn't in that. That character isn't in the chat room anymore. So I guess I don't need to lay the smack down. Anyway, I'm going to play something if I can find it here. Give me a moment. Where did I put that? Aha, listen to this, and I'll be right back. Hello? 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 Who's this? My name's Gladys. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's great. What's this all about? This number's on my caller ID. Hello. 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 I'm calling again. Uh, who is this, please? This Gladys. What do you need? This number's on my caller ID. Okay, so what can we do for you? Did you beat my dog? Hello. You know what? Would you Hello. Like, would you like to call Trace? I know. You know what? Hello. You ran over my door. Oh. Hello. Who are you and what the? Who are you? Calling me for it. I'm going again. Who are you? My name's Gladys. Uh, well, Gladys, I'm glad you, you, you found the time to give me a call. 
Oh, I'm not doing my too well myself either. Well, what the hell are you calling me for? You ran over my door. I did what? You ran over my door. Bullshit! Who ran over your dog? You leave my dog alone. If you call here again, I'll come over there and we'll see. We'll talk about your dog. And I'm back, and that was one of the new Gladys soundboard calls. Let me turn my wave down a little, because I just blasted your ear off when I spoke. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> you think we get better with this sort of thing over time? Anyway, the way I found out the information about kdk.org and .com and .net is something I've been pondering whether I should tell people or not, because it's sort of embarrassing for people to see exactly how much I suck, you know, to actually see it before them. But I'm going to fess up because honesty is always the best policy. If you go to alexa.com, you can look up any website, and it's basically a site, it's sort of like the Nielsen ratings for websites. It, it compares websites from all around the world, supposedly every website, against each other. And everybody gets a number. And, for example, kdk.com is number 4,588,342. kdk.org is number 2,774,885. KDK prank calls. I'll give you the number before anybody goes and looks it up and tries to rub it in and make fun of me. I'm, I am number 2,444,066. <sighs> Just by comparison, E-Bombs World is in the top 1,000. Just to give you a little comparison. Blackout is number 7,729,154. His hits on his site are down in the past three months 88%. Gee, I wonder why that is. And I have some other information here that I'm not going to give out. I couldn't find collegesucks.org. It said no data available. And same thing for Comedy Think Tank. And uh, same thing for Pyolite. I looked up a couple things. The number one website in the world is, of course, Yahoo. Number three was um, Google. I can't remember what number two was. It's a great, fun little site. You ought to go to it like while you're listening right now. Like Even if you're in the chat room, open up an Internet Explorer and go to alexa.com, A-L-E-X-A dot com, and look up your favorite website just to see where they rank. It's fun. Sorry, can't come to the phone right now. Would you put Please wait. Now, this is your typical call where I'm calling and I'm trying to hack somebody's answering machine and I'm ready to use the Gladys soundboard and um, somebody picks up while I'm doing it. Hang up first before you dial again, you dubby. Hello? So she goes, your balls stink. 
And so I thought, you know what, you probably couldn't have thought of a better put-down if you had stopped to think about it. Your balls stink. That's a great put-down. <laughs> Hello? This is the public phone. Hello? 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 Yes, hi, is this Sparrow? This is the public telephone. Hi, is this Sparrow's? No. Sparrow's restaurant? Hello? 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 Hi. This is a public phone. Yes, what I'm trying to do is get a little dance act together, and I wonder if you'd like to do it. No, anything. I'd like Hello? to hang up so I could make my call. Hello? <laughs> Singing and dancing. You and me, baby, a little bit. Hello? You have a public telephone. Hello? Hello, I'm Who is this, please? My name is Joe Rosenthal. Just a minute. Okay. Hello? Hello, I'm looking for... Mr. Brewer. Going to the police department, and when 
when the police department was getting these calls, if anybody called them, they'd be like, um, whatever. Kind of confused, I suppose. But I called him on the air last week. And I called him as Jill, and we had a nice conversation. It wasn't much like a prank call, because I was really nice to him, and I got him to talk a little about his Mulan generator, and I'm going to play that call later on in the program. And it's a part of last week's program, which is why I'm hesitant to post last, last week's program, because somebody's going to tell this old guy that here's a record of the prank call that I did to him, and then he's going to set forth the wheels of justice and vengeance against me. Because he's some crazy old guy and he's got nothing better to do. Or on the other spectrum, the crazy guy could call the police, trying to turn me in and trying to explain to them that I'm, I'm prank calling them and putting it on the internet and bothering him in the chat room and everything. But what if they thought he was crazy and locked him up? You know, when you're a kid and every major decision in your life is made by your parents or whatever guardian figure that you have, Oh, hopefully you have. And um, as you move away from that and you get older, a lot of younger people aren't used to making decisions on their own. I remember how nervous I was about opening a checking account when I was 18 years old because I'm walking into a bank and I'd never, I'd never opened a checking account before, but I had to to cash. Well, I opened the account so that I could cash my paycheck, so I had to be at least 16, maybe it was 16. Thanks for calling STB. How can I help you? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. I'm calling. I want to make a complaint. Uh, you can make it to me right now. Make a complaint. I just want to know. You want to know what? When are you going to show some more of them videos with some nice poo in it? Some nice poo? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I guess supposed to be. I'm looking at it right now. Look at this girl's lips. Courtney Love? Who the hell? Who you calling Love? That's who's on Courtney Love and Hole. Right now. What do you mean, Hole? The woman is red. I was in a hole in WW2. I had to fight off all those enemies while you were back home sucking your thumb. It's because of guys like me are living in a free country. Who the hell do you get off calling me some kind of Courtney? What are you, English? No, sir, I'm not English. I went out the other day to one of them restaurants, and a guy gave me some steak. Uh-huh. I, don't even, I didn't even order steak. I don't know why he gave it to me. What time are you people going to come fix my cable? I want to see some of that young meat. Some of that young meat. I want to see some of them buttocks and bosoms on them girlies. Okay, well, you want to see more bosoms and... I want to make a complaint. I don't think you show enough. Walmart, how may I help you? I'm calling in to talk to you about a radio report that doesn't seem to work. What is it? It's a radio. Okay, do you want to speak to customer service or do you want to speak to electronics? Uh, I guess electronics would be just fine. Um, I was told. Um, I bought a radio from you people about three days ago. Uh-huh. And I took it out of the package and I unwrapped it and I set it on my table. It doesn't seem to do anything. Hmm. I pressed the power button. I tried to change the channel. Nothing won't work. Okay, what you have to do is, um, you have the receipt for it still? I'm somewhere, I think so, yeah. Okay, bring it back in and we'll exchange it for you. Oh, because I had to take it right out of the box and I pushed the towel and nothing wants to work. And you plugged it in and everything and it's not working. Plug it in? Yeah. You didn't plug it in? I could try that, I guess. Yeah, you have to take the plug and plug it in the back. There's a plug in the back of it and then you plug it into the wall. Is it it's a um, boombox type of thing? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, try that. I'm trying it right now. Okay. It's a small few on the cottage people, aren't it? <laughs> I'll give that a try. Okay. Are you trying now? Yes, I am. Does it... <laughs> oh! It's working! 
Yes, it works. It's the smallest. You're very impressive. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. This is Shirley Q. Licker with your Women Health Minute. Girl, make your men leave the room. I'm going to tell you something about it. The other day I had got a pamphlet at my doctor's office told me how to do a self-examination of the breakfasts. Girl, I got scared. I went home and say, take a shower, you know, a real hot shower. So I climbed my big butt up in that shower and everything, put a uh, pink thing on my head so not to get my, uh, you know, my hairdo had just been fixed. So I got the soap and everything and say, soap up the breakfasts and feel on there and look for anything that's not right. Girl, I, it felt like I was smuggling m and I felt so many things I couldn't tell whether it was my imagination or what. Lord, I about panicked it down there and went and saw my doctor. And then he going to do the same thing, make me throw my arms all kind of ways and mash on my breakfast. He said, I'm going to have not juice. He said, Miss Licker, he said, you got to cut back on your caffeine, girl. He said, you be done got fibrinoids up in here. I said, oh, Lord. He said, but you going to be all right. I said, what well, I just feel so ignorant. So, girl, don't be scared if you feel something. Go down there and see the doctor. It might be just ignorant. That's what I had. I was diagnosed with clinical ignorance. All right, now you tell your mama I'll say how she do. Bye, honey. And we're back. And Keith is here with me. Honey, can you check and see if we have stuff for tacos? I'll make tacos. I'm in the mood for taco taco. After you hang up, your phone should ring again and display, take a message. This is your caller coming back to leave you a message. Well, I screwed up. I hit the wrong button. I meant to accept that or at least listen to who it was. I didn't mean to just have the machine cut off on you. Here we go. Now let's find out who called. Oh, yeah. He's seven. Hello? He's that Phoenix. Rachel. Rachel, what's up, then? Hey. Hello, how are you doing, Rachel? I'm trying to take off my shoes and talk to you at the same time. Oh, yeah, I thought you was really busy then or something. I thought you'd let people sign you up. No. No? No, because well, if you know what I'm <laughs> I don't give the phone number on the air anymore, so it, it cuts down on the, uh, the, the harassment calls, anyway. Yeah. How's it going, Dave? Oh, it's going fast. I'm happy. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm here. I've been wondering what's been going on with you because your attitude has changed lately and it seemed almost like you were mad at me. Well, you know. My religious views can anger many people. Well. Is that what it was? They say we're mean to our friends, so. <laughs> Don't they, Dave? That's awesome. Yeah, I mean. It's great to hear from you. Yeah. And, um,. I, I know that the Britarian came out, right? Yeah. Our article came out. come out, and the Smoke Magazine one's come out, but, yeah. What was that? There was another one? There's another one. Well, which one are you talking about? You talking about the prank call one? Yeah, the prank call one. That's going to be in the spring. Oh, it's so, not out yet. No, no, not that one. Oh, okay. No, no. But, what do you mean? There was another story about prank call? Oh, no, 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 no. That was just another one. Oh. I was in the Britarian before, but, uh-huh. That's nothing to do with it. I was on your website. Cool, cool new design to your website. I like it. Uh, that's just like Christmas, you know. Uh-huh. Oh, it's from Christmas? Yeah. I guess I'll uh, I thought I'd take a week out to just, like, sort it out a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. And, uh, I can't wait to... Um, are you going to be able to post, like, a link where we can order copies of the Britarium when the article comes out? Um, I guess, uh, I well, guess, I the editor, the editor did ask me to, like... Tell people. Oh, okay, cool. But, yeah, I suppose I could do, yeah. 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 Because I'd like to be able to buy it online and just ship it from overseas. Mm. That would be awesome. Yeah. So what's going on with you, Rachel? Um. Any new news in your life? Not particularly. Oh. No, I've got nothing exciting to tell you, really. Okay. What about you, then? What about you? Um, I, I don't know if anything exciting is going on. I don't well, know. You're going to with me, aren't you? Just the same old, same old, you know, doing the prank calls and yeah. wasting my life away. <laughs> yeah. I think mean, it's something having fun. 
Okay, I don't want to talk about online. Okay. okay. <laughs> I hate keeping Rachel on the phone long because I know how it's probably crazy expensive to call from England. Besides that, it's like four in the morning. God bless you for listening at four in the morning from England. We have a couple people who listen from England. Twilight, who just dropped off the face of the earth. I hope he's all right. And Rachel. And people whose names I forget. What's that? Mommy took his internet away. Could be. Could happen. I was, I was, no, but she's British, so it would be like the high-pitched screechy. You've been fighting people! <laughs> now Rachel's all mad. That's just the way Americans do impressions of British people. I don't want to Exactly. <laughs> See, even Monty Python did it, so this can't be that bad. And this is... Ronaldo Grande! Yeah. Who the hell is Ronaldo Grande? Oh, uh, my stepfather. Oh, okay. Is he grande? Is he muy grande? Not really. You've been away for a while. How have you been, man? I'm all right. Guess what? What? Andrew lost his... Vir- no, I'm talking to Keith. Andrew uh, lost his virginity in the time since we talked to him last. I know that. Oh, well, you, I'm just saying that for everybody else out there. But Excess was probably already in the, in the chat room bragging about it, right? Nah. He's probably in the chair and I'll smell my finger. <laughs> Dude, I've not washed my finger for a week. <laughs> did you do that? What? I did that. Like the first time I fingered a girl, I like walked up to Bill, gay Bill, and I said, smell my finger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's just because I thought it was, I thought it was funny. Weird. So what's going on, Andrew? Have you done any prank calls? Nah. No. No, he hasn't been doing his homework. We're going to have to keep him back a year. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in your world? Not much. What have you been doing lately with your time? Going to punk shows. That's awesome. You see anybody cool? Um, no, nah, I was going to go see Bane yesterday, but I didn't, I didn't have a ride to Poughkeepsie. You, you're seeing local people, right? Yeah. That's awesome, though, because there's so many places all over the United States now where you can actually go to, like, low-cost shows and see, like, underground punk bands. It's awesome. It's, it's eight bucks to get in and uh, have a fucking blast every time. Yeah. No, usually, no matter how bad the band sucks, it's fun to go. Yeah. <laughs> I went to one yesterday. I'm going to one tomorrow. Oh, um, how far is the Empress Ballroom from you? The Empress Ballroom is about... Half hour from us. Not even. Not even probably 20 minutes. Because I'm going to be there March 20th. Who's, who's playing at the Empress? Uh, one of my really good friend's band. A friend of mine from high school owns the place. Does he really? Yeah. My friend Bill Kaczynski owns the place. That's cool. Yeah, everybody's looking at the show. I haven't talked to him in a long, long time, though. Yeah. Last time I talked to him was at the club, like, six, eight months ago. That was at a high. And before that, I was talking at the diner when he gave us passes. That's cool. So who are you seeing there? Uh, my friend's band. Where? It's, their, their band name is Sister Mary and the Bling Bling Bagel Shop. Sister Mary and the Bling Bling Bagel Shop? Yeah. When? The 20th. May 20th? Yep. Er, this, this is so awesome. This month. We're gonna, we're, we're, we're <laughs> this month? Yeah, is it March? Is it, yeah, March. This month is March? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're just, we're still gonna buy a bag of weed and get still with Andrew access. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Andrew, you feel like doing a prank? Of course. Yeah. So who are we going to call? Hmm. I'm looking for the numbers now. Let me minimize this and look at what people are sending me from the chat room. People are trying to send me files. You could get files through the Java or using an in the, the .exe for Merck. I don't know if anything that I'm accepting is coming through. I'm just accepting. What's that? Yeah, and just rubbing on the phone. Are you? No, you're not drinking beer, right? No. What are you drinking? Chocolate milk. Oh, healthy.
build it? Yeah. And then what did you do? You, you sent it to the phone losers or what? Uh, I think one of them did. Uh huh. One of them was more into the scene. Well, I was just like into doing it. Yeah. And then they got me into the scene and shit. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I recently saw the um, Atlantic Dimensions one with Sally, the video of the God Channel. Yeah, isn't that great? I was in hysterics. Isn't that great? Oh my god. That's the funniest thing. The fact that they got on. I know, they were trying to get me to call in, too, and I was, like, too nervous, and I didn't know what to say, and I didn't think Joe could get past the screener. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to just call up and do a normal voice. I had to be goofy somehow. <laughs> yeah. I had throat cancer, and now my bird has throat cancer. <laughs> and now God has throat cancer. It goes tweet, tweet. <laughs> uh, let's try one more random before we go. All right. Okay. May the gods of random pranks smile upon us and we get a working number to a befuddled person. I think I should tag this. Hey, Billy. Uh, hello? Yeah. Um, I got a call from this number earlier. Today we were talking to my son. And he said that all that they were saying was, uh, cactus over and over. Cactus? Yeah. Over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, um, this is a diner? So I have no idea who could have called from there. So who at the diner was fucking around with my son? Oh, you mean someone was saying that to your son? Yeah. Um, well, this phone is normally just for people to get phone calls, just to take, or take out orders from. And we don't really let anyone use the phone, so we have no idea. The only people here right now is the manager and us waitresses, and we have only been doing our job, you know what I mean? Yeah, can I talk to the manager? He's right here. Hold on one second. Hello? They hung up on us. Did they really? Damn. Um, she probably didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, she's been calling the whole time. Cactus, cactus, cactus. Yeah. Would you like, uh, would you like, uh, milk in your cactus? Dude. Poor waitress. That was a three brother diner. Was it really? I got the number. I knew it was gonna work. <laughs> hey, when you come up here, we're gonna have we're gonna have to stop for food at the Three Brothers Diner. Yeah. Too bad Roger's not there anymore. You can see what he looks like. Yeah. Yeah, Three Brothers Diner is like right around the corner from the Empress. Cool. We'll probably go there during the show. Cool. Like during a band that sucks. Yeah. Whenever there's time. <laughs> have you ever been to Danbury before with the Empress? I've never been to the Empress, but I go to the mall all the time. There's been. Yeah. I've been to a. Okay. You can oh, wait, hang on. He says he has the best idea. You can be the dad, and Andrew can be Maurice. You guys can go in there acting all. He can go in there acting all feminine. You mean do a live, a live action, real life prank? <laughs> yes, and I can videotape it with the camera. And you'll videotape it. I can be it with the little camera, with the camera. We could do it. <laughs> we could. He still can't sleep. We could cut a hole in your book bag and position the camera so you just like put your bag. Just like point your back at everybody. <laughs> that won't be too conspicuous. Yeah. And, like, I'll probably be with a bunch of my friends, so they can be like, all these kids were here, they were witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what's going to happen? What? We're going to we're gonna be the pathetic old creepy guys hanging out with the little kids. <laughs>
don't know. That is too creepy. Yeah. What, what would you see? Like a dark shape? It was just the outline of a person. And, because, um, like, the sun hits the mirrors and there's always a glare. Uh-huh. So it was a cutout of the glare. Uh-huh. And, yeah, and nobody was there. Wow. Yeah. You weren't, like, on like well roof here or anything, were you? No. No? <laughs> wow. How old is your house? Since it's been there since 73. Has anybody ever died there? Probably. You don't know for sure? No, there was, there was a woman there, and she had, like, seven kids. Uh-huh. And, I don't know. She probably died in the house. Probably. And I our, house, our house is not really that big, and I don't really know how the hell you had, like, a lot of people. Because my room's not that big. It's, like, 11 by 11. Uh-huh. And, yeah. Probably. Probably good. My sister's house, I think, is haunted. Because her house is, um, no lie, my sister married somebody who has, um, he does contracting for the mob. That's awesome. I wouldn't say that he's involved with the mob, but he is somebody that if the mob needs an electrical job, they call him to do it. So he, he gets paid very, very well to just do the job and ask no questions <laughs> of what go, what, what's going on while he's working on their shit. <laughs> yeah. And, um, they bought a very big house that used to be, it's a four-story house that used to be a hospital. That's fucked up. The ground floor is like a basement and a bomb shelter. Is it really? Yeah. That's and, awesome. And there's, um, it's four stories, and it used to be like a mini hospital, like a doctor's office slash hospital. Mm. And um, several, several people over the years died in there because it was running for like 50 years. So you know someone died in that. Yeah. And um, there were parts of the house that they haven't worked on yet because there's four stories. They worked on, you know, the, the bottom floor, and they worked on the upstairs where they live, but then there's also an attic, and then there's, like, one big room at the top of the house. Yeah. So um, I went up there before, and it, it, it looks like an abandoned house up there. They haven't done anything with it, and there's nothing stored up there or anything. That's weird. And I was up there, and... Um, of course, there's dust everywhere when you move things, and I thought I I, I thought I saw the dust um, move as if something had walked past, yeah. like the light was coming in through the uh, the upstairs window, and like it looked like the dust was disturbed by something other than me. Yeah. But it could be a draft from the window, probably. Yeah, it could have been. It's things like that that just make you think. Yeah. Yeah. I always try to rationalize everything and come up with the, like, the uh, scientific answer. It was the wind coming in through the window. Yeah. Not really some, uh... Some but then, like, there was no wind. Like, you didn't feel anything, and then you're like, uh, oh, what the hell? Uh, well, I didn't think of it at the time to go check the window for, like, a draft. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. Uh, right. Because we don't seem to be having any luck with the prank calls. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you soon, man. Later. Bye-bye. That'd be cool. But, you know, I, I probably would be really embarrassed to be hanging out with a bunch of uh, Andrew's friends. Because to them, I'm like the uh, the sorry old guy hanging out with the young kids. <laughs> you would be too, but you're not as bad as me. You're going to be tw- you're going to be 25. You're 10 years older than them. <laughs> but that would be a good idea if I went in there as like Andrew or if Andrew act, acted retarded and I was his dad and acted like I was beating him up or like smacking him around or something <laughs> yeah you know it probably is against the law just to pretend something like that you know you want me to do that honey I was planning on doing that let, let me play a bit and then I'll uh, cook dinner well, I'll come help. <laughs> I'll, I'll cut up the lettuce and the tomato and get the cheese and everything ready, okay? I can do that, right? And what do I play? I'm going to play... I tried downloading some stuff... Uh-oh, before the program. This is probably Ted Web. Hey! Oh, God. <laughs> Ted, you're like one of my cats. You know when the cats haven't meowed in a while, like you wake yeah. them up and they look up at you and their mouth opens and no sound comes out? 
Yeah, they're like... <laughs> crazy like that, yeah. How are you doing, man? I got a cold. You got another cold? I don't know what the hell's going on. My wife's got one, too. I think she's bringing... Because she's working with kids more, so I blame her. Oh, um, yeah. Kids are like... Germs home. The kids are like little walking infectious diseases. <laughs> covered in snot and, and bacteria. <laughs> yeah, they like, you know, rub their hands all over their nose and they... Mm-hmm. And they come up and give me a nice big hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Let me go back to the chat room so I can see what's going on. Somebody ought to go to the Pindar room on Yahoo and tell them that we're talking about them here. Tell them to to broadcast it through the Yahoo chat. Or, you know what? Somebody go into the Yahoo chat and broadcast the show as we're going on, and we'll talk about Pindar. <laughs> we'll drive him insane. And then we'll call him. What do you mean drive him insane? He's already made that trip. But you know how he's freaking out about your call last week. You you called and all you said is there's been some radiation leakage or something, and he thinks there's a government conspiracy and I don't know. He's just off the wall. He played it on on the, in the chat room and then he, he's acting like he's gonna have a stroke, like he's he's so shocked. Oh wow! He's just completely insane. So I would recommend against calling him because. Yeah. You weren't privy to what happened last night, but we had some fun at his expense for quite a while last night. <laughs> and Hellbringer called him three times and gave his name and address and phone number out in the chat room. Oh, shit. But we had fun. So, had you ever heard of the Alexa site? No, I hadn't. You had never heard of it I before? Of, no, I hadn't. And I noticed that my website had lost. Um, From the Alexa hopefully. bot, right? The crawler? It says, like, my page had been viewed, like, 700,000 less times than it did six months prior. I don't know how accurate that part of the information is. You know? Yeah. Because mine says I'm down, like, 1.6 million hits, and that means that at some point I would have been, like, in the 0 to 1 million range. And I know it's never been that high. I know we've never been up there, but maybe it's just technology, technology they're still working on. I don't know. They well, know, they I know that, like, when I, when I, like, took a whole bunch of shit off the site for a while, then the hits dropped dramatically, and then uh, ever since I put stuff back, put the downloads back, now the traffic is building again. Yeah. Okay. You sound like a completely different person. <laughs> oh, I feel for you, man. <laughs> How are you medicating? <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on. What are you taking for? Think, uh, well, it's, it was taking Claritin. It's like two dollars a pill. Claritin is for for colds. Well, it's it's a decongestant and an antihistamine, so it like clears everything out. Oh, better than uh, over the counter stuff. Well, they offer it over the counter now. Oh, they do. It's just really expensive. Yeah. But it, it's like crack for colds. It works really well. Cool. Yeah. All right. Plus, you're in California. You know, it's warm. <laughs> Seriously, like last <laughs> week, 
you know, it's like I'm not even doing anything. Like I'm just trying to do my job well. And I had two two interviews with the vice president in two weeks, and uh, she's like, you know, what do you want to do in ten years? Do you want to be a leader? Do you want to? It's like I'm 27 years old, lady. Leave me alone. <laughs> Before you start throwing the dollar signs at me and taking away all my personal time, let, wait till I'm 40 or 50. You mean she was uh, interviewing you for a promotion? Yeah. She wants awesome. Me to, she wants me to be, you know, she wants me to climb. And I'm like, well, I'm kind of in grad school now, and I'll climb later. <laughs> but I didn't say that to her. I was like... Awesome, awesome. I need to break in for a moment here to thank one of the listeners... Thank you, Mr. Peepers. I got your donation, and I love you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> raise money for KDK. Seriously, all kidding aside, at least you're honest, and you say that the money will go to... <laughs> to I left money. work today, and I had to go buy a phone card and beer, of course, and a pack of cigarettes, just so I could do the show, and that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Zach is, uh... Zach said fuck you at some point, but it was before we started talking about it, so I don't know. Zach is, oh, oh, I didn't realize Zach is here. Hello, Zach. I haven't, I haven't been a good host. I haven't been paying attention I to I think that's why he started using vulgarity. He's like, fuck you. Oh, okay. See if you'd notice him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I still have to confirm my account before I can get that money. Yeah, okay. because the two of them are talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, here's an email I have from Raw Milk. These are some old ladies who are either irritable, out of it, annoying, or some combination of the three. And I think you might enjoy talking to them. Maybe Edgar could try hooking up. So we got Betty, Alisa, Ann, and then, and then an, an old man who can get very easily pissed off and rude, Sheldon. <laughs> this is so, awesome. Do you want Betty, Alisa, Anne and Sheldon. I know, this is great work, because not only are these, like, working numbers, we know that they work, but we know they're all angry old people. I don't know. How did he find, like, angry old people? He must have a job where he, he can see people's maybe names. Maybe he, like, works for Social Security. Yeah, maybe he works for unemployment. Maybe he's to find somebody who works for Social Security. He's in retail, and he gets people's numbers off their credit cards, <laughs> like I've been known to do, and look them up just to prank them, because they were an asshole to you. Okay. Sheldon. You want to call Sheldon first, the old man? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> we got to ask Anne if she'd play with her pussy. Well, I'm 84, I'm a widow, I live by myself. 
by myself. And uh, I just don't know who I'm talking to. How, how are you liking the single life? Be because I'm single myself, and I'm loving it. I haven't been single since I was 25, and I've been single for five years since Jill passed away. You, you remember Jill? No. Um, I, was, I was Annie Whitmer before. I remember. Then I married Paul Keene, and Me. Paul Keene died many years ago, and I'm a widow. Yes, I remember. I, I was a friend through work. You know, well, uh, with Paul. Oh, what did you say her name was? Ed R Rosenthal. Oh, I don't recall any name by that. Well, maybe I have the wrong Annie Keaton. Well, I was Annie Hall for all many, 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 many years. And I was an Annie Whitma. And, and he divorced me. And then I married Paul Keene. You don't have very good luck, do you? Same as me. No, I don't have very good luck. Well, um, um, Jack, are you sure you dialed the right number? Um, so wait, I, I dialed the right number. I didn't dial no, no number. Did, did you just call me? No, I didn't call nobody. Did, did you call and say that, um... Huh? Um, did you call and say you had found my glasses? No, no, no. No, no, Jack, we were calling Annie because I thought she was my friend, but I, I think maybe I have the wrong person. Yeah, no. I think you do. I believe you do. Well, see, what what happened was, um, I, I am fitted with a, a device that uh, protects me from um, allergens because uh -huh. I was born without an immune system. Uh -huh. And it's difficult for me to dial the phone. Well, it's called a bubble, just face facts. Don't pussyfoot around. I, am um, I, I, I thought you wouldn't call it that anymore, and, and it, really, huh? it really offends me when people use the word bubble because... Oh, it, okay, it's a spherical mobile environment, I know, okay, it's a bubble. Okay. Well, Annie, I'm sorry that we bothered you, but I'm, I'm happy that we gave you a laugh. Okay. And you'll um, take care of yourself. And are, you still, are you still looking for... Um, <laughs> I'm not looking for anybody. Okay, you take okay. care. You know, you maybe, maybe we'll go out for coffee sometime. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I didn't want to be mean to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I dialed the wrong number. I was looking at the wrong one. We dialed the one right above her. We called Anne. Oh. That was, that was Anne. <laughs> that was my screw up, but she was a nice old lady. Yeah. See, it's possible to have a prank call that's not, like, really mean and nasty. Oh, yeah. We don't usually <clears throat> get that. I mean, it's only with, uh, <clears throat> what is it, Jeff Williams, or what the hell is his name? David Williams. <laughs> <laughs> have you called? Have you called who? I don't want to call him. He's like he's dying. He, seriously, he gets worse every time we call, and it's just like, remember when we called Mr. O'Rourke and he started getting worse and worse? It's the same thing all over again, and it's just sad. <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. O'Rourke all over again. What? Well, I'm not the cause. I'm not the cause. I'm the cause. Cause of death. Now, that would be a great idea for a call, call movie. For a horror movie. People that we prank call just die. Watch, like five years later. It's like the ring three. Uh, in five years, we're going to have Mr. O'Rourke's family is going to sue us. <laughs> you killed him, or Francis. No, he did. Left him to die in the hospital. Yeah, I don't, well, you know, doesn't mean they would have lived to profit from his death. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know that KDK will never be successful or turn a profit, so we don't have to worry about anybody trying to get any money out of us. <laughs> This is not Vince words here, but it's the roll roll. That's awesome. It's great that people donate money, but buy stuff too. You know, the, the CDs yeah, are really cheap. Money. The CDs are really cheap, and I send them out right away. So, and you can probably even haggle with me if you send me an email, <laughs> like like the the guy from uh, Prank Call Central did. Prank Call Central sells our first and our fifth CD because those are the ones that I sent him for free. He's selling them on his website.
<laughs> and I don't know if it's been all this time, it's been like a year and a half or two years, and he still hasn't sold those t same two CDs, or if he's selling bootlegs. Yeah, I don't know. How does he, how does he do that? I mean, he just, people send him, does he send you like a commission or something? No, or he what? buys them from me and then he sells them. Like he bought them from me for five bucks, and he'll probably sell them for ten ninety nine. Oh, that's how it does it. So he makes a nice little profit, and I make uh, five bucks. <laughs> I thought, I thought, like, um, he had some kind of arrangement. No. So when people buy them from him, theoretically, he would contact me and, and get more. But I don't know if he's doing that or just buying. <coughs> Everybody go to Prank Call Central and buy a KDK CD. So I, I can know so whether... to order more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See if he orders more or not. <coughs> anyway, let's try... Who is next on the list here? Well, we're going to do Sheldon. <laughs> Let's go back to the one we wanted to do the first time. <clears throat> um, I'm going to mute the mic and tell you his last name, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. Just in case it comes up. Cool. Okay. You got it? Yep. Okay, I'm going to call. Answer the long time. You went reach 207. We cannot take your call at this time. Please use the message to <laughs> Hello? No messages. Oh, I got it. End of messages. And he didn't have any, because he's a lonely old shutting table. <laughs> no raw milk joint. Raw Milk. I love Raw Milk. He's the guy who donated these numbers, and he's also a kind and generous donator to KDK. Sweet. <clears throat> I'm not keeping an eye on the chat right now because I'm looking at these numbers here. Okay, we got Betty and Aletha. Alicia. No, it's Alisa. Alisa. Alisa, yeah. That's a weird one. Um... Miss Cleo 
real psychic hotline for giving. You know what? You probably shouldn't call her because they're so sneaky that there's probably some like yeah. fucked up way to charge you. <clears throat> now I think if I use a calling card, then yeah, well, yeah, that would work. Hey, how could they? How could they bill a calling card? They can probably ask you for a credit card number. Yep, they're probably first thing they say.
he hung in there a long time and it got really quiet really fast. Did you notice? Everybody just shut up really quick. Yeah. <laughs> and probably all like standing around staring at him on the phone. <laughs> I was going to have Ed come in and sing happy birthday. Yeah. That would have been funny. Yeah, but it would have ended the call though, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I, didn't want to I ended it anyway. So. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin it. Anyway, Ted, I'm going to let you go because my taco taco is getting cold. Taco taco. Okay. And Ted, feel free to call back in later if you wish, but I'm, I have to take a break here now because I'm going to eat my food and I'm going to play some stuff for you to listen to. <clears throat> Hopefully it won't suck too much. Um, what do I play that doesn't suck? Pharmacy. Uh, yes, could, could, I, could, uh, could I speak to someone regarding a question as to contraception? Uh, what is your question? Well, I'm, uh, I don't want to talk too loud here. I have my girlfriend in the other room, and mm-hmm. I was just wondering, I don't have any condoms or any type of vaginal cream or foam or anything, and I was wondering... I I, uh, I I took a piece so that, you know, the stuff that the newspapers come in, that bag, and I cut a piece of it off, and I'm using a tourniquet. Is that effective as far as warding off unwanted this pregnancy? A, oh, are you serious? I'm, I'm dead serious, and I can't, I'm, I I don't want to talk too loud here. Okay, so if you don't want a, any possibility of impregnating her, you don't want Well, to. you're telling me, because I'll tell you, she, she's a very, very ugly person. Don't touch like, her then. Well, that's the problem. In, in order for her to, for us, she, she's insisting that I do this. And I'm, and I have a, I just was wondering. Hey, sir, you can say no just as well as she can. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I want to say no. But my question is, now that I've maintained an adequate erection, is there anything around the kitchen, perhaps, that I could use in lieu of a condom? No, sir. Maybe a glad alligator bag or a sir. No. brain wrap tinfoil? Nothing. Maybe a balloon? No, sir. What if I pull out? What? What if I pull out? I think it's conus interruptus. If, if right oh, before... Oh, that's not safe either. Well, God. What if... What if Abstinence I... is going to be the only sure way. What about other forms of, of information or copulation, like anal intercourse? Is there any way, for example, of an errant sperm finding its way to the vaginal os? Sir, I... <laughs> These are just not questions you should be asking a pharmacist. Well, I, I saw this commercial, and there was an old lady who had drank poison, and she called you. Okay, now, poison woman, control we can handle. Now, if a woman can call you... This kind of a question, sir, after is... She's had poison. Well, put it this way. The amount of semen that's building up in me right now is really almost like a poison. And if I don't eradicate it soon, I'm going to blow up. So my question is very simply this. Hold on a minute. Sure. Can I help you? Uh, yes. I, I, I was talking to somebody regarding contraception. I was put on hold. No. Yes. I was wondering if there was anything I could use for, for a safe, uh, safe and effective contraception in lieu of a condom. Um, I, she, she had suggested to me that the condom pretty much was the best way. But I was wondering, I one time bought some Minoxidil 9, and I was wondering, I understand that's, that's very effective, it's not as effective as a condom, but it would be a second choice. Well, the only problem is, as I was explaining, and I'm, I, I've never, I've never, I feel like a fool here. I've never, I hope you don't mind me calling you, but I saw this commercial where this old lady ate drank poison and called you. I figured, well, hell, if you know about poison, you got to know this. Is there anything I could use around the house that could be a substitute for an Anoxin all nine? Shaving cream? No, nothing. Vinaigrette, Dijon mustard, anything along those lines. No, there is not. What about driveway gravel? No, not got to go. I have a doctor waiting. Okay. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hey, what's taking so long to answer the phone? (laughs) Phone call in the morning. Yeah, so. Well, I got to do anything. No. What are you doing tonight? No. You want to go ahead and drink a few beers? Mm-hmm. Okay. What? Mm-hmm. You want to go ahead and drink a few beers? Mm-hmm. This is Eric. Eric. Oh, Reducci. Mm-hmm. You're a 
fucking funny. What? Hey, don't get stupid. No, you don't get stupid. No, shut up, you goddamn backwards fuck. Yeah, you listen to me. You come out here. You shut up. Yeah. Well, come out there. Come out here, you motherfucker. No, take it easy, pal. I'm just asking you if you want to go out and drink a beer. You trying to come on to you, you fucking faggot. See here, you know what your problem is? My problem is you fucking call my goddamn house and fucking four o'clock in the morning. No, you shut up for a minute, bitch. Try to fucking lie on her. Here's here's what's wrong. Here's what's wrong. You're so used to having daddy touch you. No, I don't think you're so used to having daddy touch you. That's the number you called. That's my number, but there's 
no one named Amy here. Yeah, that, that's the number I, I gave my nurse to dial. Is, is, is that this number? Is it area code? Oh, yes, yes. Well, this, I mean, this is my house, and I don't have any one named Amy, and I don't think I'm kidding you, so that means that it's not your granddaughter's house. Oh, that's, I mean, that's, that's odd. I, 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 wonder, I wonder why Amy would lie. I don't know. Did she leave you that number and say that's where she was going to be? Yeah. See, it, it's her birthday today, and, and she said oh. she's going to go out with, with, with some friends. Yeah, well, I I'm, I don't have, I mean, I have grown children. My, my daughters are 25 and 27, and I have a 20-year-old son, yeah, yeah. and that's all that's here. And, I mean, nobody's here. <laughs> no Amy. Oh, Amy just turned 21, and... But but I don't know, but my son is lives in Ch in Knoxville. He's a school, oh. so he yeah. wouldn't she wouldn't be here. And I he doesn't have any. To my knowledge, there's no girls named Amy. I mean, he has a girlfriend, but her name's not Amy. So I don't know. I don't know why she would have given you this number either. Yeah, is is your son named Brad? No. Oh okay. She she said she was she was gonna meet up with with a Brad and his friend. No, my son's named David, and like I said, he's in Knoxville. Yeah, Brad so and his I, friend David. So I, 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 guess I don't know. I, I don't know any Brad, and my son does not have a friend named Brad. No, he doesn't have a friend named Brad. No. Oh, so you're not coming up for her, are you? No, I promise. I okay. Said, okay. I am not. I'm, I'm a mother. I would not cover oh. up for kids who are lying to a parent or a grandparent. I don't know an Amy. My son doesn't know an Amy as far as I know. Uh, there's no one here but my husband and me, and I don't know where Amy is, but she's not here. Okay. Um, I I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you being a parent, I mean, what, what would you do in this situation? I don't think there's much you can do until you until Amy goes home yeah. or, or, you know, or, or whatever, because... You know, unless she has a cell phone that you could call, no. I don't know. No, she she can't have a cell phone. Well, all I think you can do is wait for her to return home and then ask her where she was. Because she's not a sister. I don't even know where she got this number from. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, she might have random or... or... Could, yeah, it could be. I don't know. But like I said, my son, to my knowledge, does not have any friends named Amy that he would have given this number to. And you said your, your son was David. Yeah. Okay. But he's, like I said, he's 20, and he's in Knoxville, and, you know, he's certainly not here, and I don't, and he doesn't have a friend named Brad, so I don't know where she got the number from. Yeah. I would certainly wait for her to come home and try to find out where she was. Yeah, I mean... So you want me to call you when she gets back? No, I don't think that's necessary. I think you just need to find out when she gets back. But, I mean, I don't know her, so I don't need to know about it. Well, but you're involved in it. No, I'm not. No, I'm I know. Not she needs to apologize to you about giving out your phone number. I mean, well, look at the inconvenience she has caused you. Well, it's not that inconvenient. If, she wants, if you want to ever call me and apologize, that's fine. Otherwise, I don't really care. Just tell her don't give out my phone number anymore. Okay, so you wouldn't mind if, if I told her to apologize? Yeah, I would for sake of principle want, want well, her to do it. Well, that's, that's fine. If you want her to do that, that's fine. She can do that. Okay. Well, um, I'm... I, Sorry for, for bothering well, you. I'm sorry you don't know where she is. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> she's 21. She's probably if this is her birthday. She's 21. She's probably out with friends, going to a bar somewhere. Is my guess. Yeah, this, this, uh, she shouldn't be going to a bar. No, but she's 21, and now she's legal, so she probably is. That's my guess, and she may not have wanted you to know that. But I, I mean, that that's just as the parent of three children. That would be my guess as to where she was on her 21st birthday. She, your children became alcoholics when they were 21? No, they did not become alcoholics. Oh. Um, I'm just saying that now that she's legal and she can drink legally, she 
she probably, I think my children all went to a bar on their 21st birthday. Oh. They were not living at home then. They were away at school. But oh. it wouldn't surprise me to find out that's where she was if this is her 21st birthday. But I don't know her, so I don't know that. I'm just guessing. Oh, okay. Okay. I have no idea because I don't know who she is. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that if you find out that's where she was. Yeah, I, 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 I guess that would make sense. You know, she's 21. I mean, she's 21, and that's normally what 21-year-olds do on their birthday. Yeah, okay. Okay, good luck. I hope you found her. No, thank you. You'll I'm, be sure look, I'm sure she'll be home in a little while, or, to, or tomorrow anyway. Tomorrow? <laughs> Later tonight? I don't know. She'll be home. Okay. Well, okay, good luck. Uh, if, if she comes home late, I'll have her call you tomorrow morning. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have a good Bye-bye. evening. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. See, that was crazy. Did you hear that? Someone's so gullible. And that was ComedyThinkTank.com, as I'm supposed to refer to it now, I believe. ComedyThinkTank.com. You'll find the prank calls in the prank blog. Hidden in there. Very sneaky, sneaky. You lost your cigarettes? You can smoke mine, you know. They're not, they're not strong enough for you. I just love, like, the strange mumblings and sounds that Thurston does. Just not... Just aside from the talking, just like... You know? <laughs> I love it, but maybe it's just me. Anyway, Josh ought to be calling in any moment now with Monkey Richie on the line so that we can make some prank calls. So that's something to look forward to. And I'm done with my tacos. And I finished my first beer of the night. We're going to eat lighter. Rachel says, Who the bejesus? is uh, David Williams. And David Williams, that's... It, he's somebody that the Atlantic Dimensions pranked and they got a good reaction, so he's, like, become a regular. And they all sit around their telephone and they celebrate our calls. And they have fun and they stay in line with us for 45 minutes and they won't hang up. Lunatic Ranger on the air. Hi. I was just trying to hold up pizza. <laughs> I don't know who you are. Why are you answering at the pizza man's house? Huh? <laughs> um, what would you like in your pizza? I, I don't I don't want any cheese. I don't like that cheese stuff. So basically, I just want some bread with some uh, tomato sauce, if you can do that. Okay, do you want me to cook it, or do you want, like, raw dough? You can you can dip it in the sauce. I, I like the raw dough. I like to make little figurines, like the two of a dough ball, <laughs> eat them up. <laughs> I've made a dough penis before. <laughs> Happy <you> now. <laughs> How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm good. Josh, your parents are going to be off the computer. Is there like a command that you're on the phone? I'm in the basement. So they're awake, but they just don't know that you're down there with the phone? Nope. So what happens if they go down there? Well, my mom's asleep and my dad just went to bed, so they won't be coming down here. So we're all milk. There was no Atlantic Dimension show last night. I'm, I'm reacting to the, the chat room. <laughs> well, I guess if you consider what happened in Pindar's room, a show, I guess there was, was a awesome. show. <laughs> I recorded most of it from, from when I was in there. I don't so know. Full. He's so full of it. Yeah. He's not calling Homeland Security. He's calling Homeland Security. Oh, he's, he's, he's like, oh, I called Los, Al- Los Alamos. Los Alamos is where they developed, developed the atom bomb. I what does that have to do with, like, turning people in? It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. If he calls somebody up and starts talking about Los Alamos and, uh, the, what is it? Homeland Security? Yeah. They're just going to lock his ass up for the last yeah, remaining year of his life. He said from now on, when people call them, they're directed to the uh, police station. Well, they were. Last night, anyway. I don't know about that. Did I ever dial him directly? Oh. Because I know I called him on the Atlantic Dimension show. 
right? Yeah, he did. But I don't remember who dialed. Yeah. Richie, who dialed? Richie? Who? Oh. That's Aaron. Oh, it's Aaron this time. Oh, Aaron. Yeah. I was just listening to the show. I'm, I'm so used to Richie uh, calling him. You guys sound a lot alike, too. Do we? Yeah, that's why he can do Sally so well. Oh. I was just listening to the show. It's like, I'm like three minutes behind or something. I was listening to myself call in. It's a delay. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little confusing if you try to listen. Sometimes the delay is bad tonight. Apparently it's pretty bad. So, I was also downloading stuff, too. So I'm a part behind because of that. Could be, I suppose. I'm not sure how that works. So, <clears throat> who do we feel like calling tonight? Do you guys have anybody in mind in particular? Well, I went to uh, People Pages, and I found a number for uh, Ozzy Osbourne in California. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be him, but it's worth giving him a shot, I think. You think Ozzy is even his real name? I'm sure that's what he goes by, like in his like, documents and stuff. Yeah, well, we, we can give it a try. Yeah. Who, who's going to dial? I, I need to dial? Yeah, I can't get out. Okay, so let me get my pad. Something just hit me in the back. There's a cat toy. 
the cat just hit me with like a little mouse. Hey, here. Oh, fuck. Then it just knocks the cable box off the TV to go get it. Sorry, uh, William Hung again. Yeah. He was on a TV. I saw him on my show. They had him on there singing. Yeah. You think, I don't think he'll pick up the phone. Mm. He picked up from it one time, but if you don't want to, it's alright. He picked up one time for you? Yeah. It was a relay call, though. Oh, man. That was your one shot. Yeah. Then he made a relay call. Somebody tried to relay call me the other night. <coughs> Was that you? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> I swear it wasn't me. Okay. What, what is William's... I, I, oh, you want to call William? I didn't keep William's number, so I'm going to have to take it from you again. Let me put you on mute. Okay. Well, give it a try. It's in California, right? So it's still early. Yep. I'm going to do this thing where you, you're my mom, and it's my birthday, and you, you want him to sing for me. Sure. I'll do James and stuff, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Smells, Pauline smells. We, we tried Molly. We haven't tried Pauline smells. Moon yeah. Virgin. Kenny Dumbass. We'll call Pauline. Pauline smells? Okay. Or she smells.
<laughs> he said the same. You know, he was in some gay bar with some techno gay music playing when he did that. Probably. Or just getting all gay around his apartment. Um, Mad Husud Hanan Kuna. I am. <laughs> like, call him Mad for short, I guess. <laughs> It's too long. That's one of the new Neo's numbers. Okay. Yeah. Now is it okay if I do something? Sure. Alright, hello. Hi. Hello, sir. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I heard um you're recruiting for Al Qaeda. I'd like to get some uh, information about that. Is there like an, an age limit? What kind uh-huh. of I said I heard you're recruiting for Al Qaeda. Can Is you it? Me, I need to get some information. Mm-hmm. I'm interested. That's right. And um, is there like a, a fee I need to pay to get in? Mm-hmm. What's that? You come down and I'll explain to you. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. How many members do you have right now? Come down. I'll explain to you in detail. Okay. And you're uh, recruiting from Al Qaeda, right? Oh my God! <laughs> what if he really was? Come down here, I'll explain to you. Maybe he uncovered like a secret plot. <laughs> wow! He like agreed to me. <laughs> Re- report that man. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Who does Pindar call when he has to trace a number? I need to call them. He calls the brown road beans. Um. Okay, Natasha Mongelo or Ed Fingerling? Um, or no, but Natasha. You want Natasha Mongelo? Yeah. Okay. Natasha, maybe she's Russian or Romanian or something.
Hello? <laughs> things just things just turn sort of uh, ugly towards the end in that one. <laughs> oh man. Nice to take that little break there. Hello. I don't appreciate being hung up on. <laughs> if it's up, that would be nice. Why is your retarded ass calling me? What? <laughs> Why are you calling me? I'm calling you because you hung up on me and it's mm. not nice. Mm. Mm. Don't give me that. <laughs> no, I'll post your face in. <laughs> Still Kenny, right? Kenny? Yeah? Won't we kill him if he does it again? Oh, that's a little too hard. Oh, well, Ronald says he works in a CBS near a senior apartment complex. That's how he gets, <laughs> that's how he gets these names and numbers of old people. Yeah, so, you want to do that thing where we, like, call, like, a store and say, we're truck, they're stuck in the rafters. They're trying to rob a store, guys, stuck. Um, someone's going to have to look for a store number. There's nothing open around here in this state. Yeah, I'll hear it, though. The last thing that pops up from scanning the extra care card, that's it. The, from the, using the little CBS card. Yeah. You using that and the address of the apartment, so I was able to look up the numbers. Awesome. It's all, it's all old people? Well, if it's a retirement complex. They're all sleeping. Well. Getting their beauty rest. Yeah. <laughs> your beauty rest. You guys looking? Like Walmart, Kmart, something open 24 hours somewhere? They're all closed. I wouldn't call my phone. Oh, that's right. I don't. Very clever. Yeah, I was in the store today. I was gonna wait until you left and I was gonna steal something, but I can't get out. See, if I'd known that before, I would say that I was calling from the drugstore saying that we accidentally gave them the wrong prescription and they might start growing breast or something. We gave them, like, estrogen tablets. <laughs> Call up Sheldon and tell him that Sheldon must be a guy he really doesn't like if he wants wants me to hang on to the number and call him another night. <laughs> and I am. I'm gonna say I'm gonna save that email so you can always refer back to it. I have a number. You have a number? Yeah. We can give this out over the air because it's a business that solicits people to call. <laughs> okay. What state is that in? I think it would be cool to find one like, um, you know, a redneck state. You know, like, I don't know, like, Kentucky, Tennessee. I'll try to find one. I think all yeah. Super Walmarts are open 24 hours. Cool. Um, let me dial this one. I'll be right back. Please enter. Martha Stewart's going to jail. I can't wait to see how she decorates her cell. I can't stand Martha Stewart, and I've never watched her show in my life, and I never would. But if there was a Martha Stewart's living where she decorated, like, cells in, in the jail that she's in, I would totally watch. I'd, I'd pay-per-view that. Hey. Call my Super Center. How may I direct your call? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. How are you? Um, I'm doing great. I'm on the phone with my grandmother, Sally. And um, she wanted me to call because she had something to complain about. And she wanted me to call now. She didn't want. She said I couldn't even wait till tomorrow. Okay, it is tomorrow, but anyway. Well, you know what I mean, like tomorrow morning, like when. Right. Um. So, um, Sally, you, you there? I think I have her on the extension. Sally. Oh, hello. There you are. You want to explain to the woman? I have Walmart on the line right now. Uh, is this the woman? I, I was at the cash register. No. Well, anyways, I bought some stuff. You know how you have the chips, the potato the what? chips. Potato chips. Yeah. Yeah. As I was going to the line, the, the lady there that was um, taking my, uh, scanning my stuff, was being really mean. And as she grabbed my my chips, she crunched them up with her hand. She smashed them all up. And she just threw them in my my bag in like a violent manner. Okay, maybe I'll explain. The lady. 
I can understand what she's saying. She came through the line, and I guess she was buying some potato chips. And the cashier was kind of mean, and she crumpled up her potato chips. Yeah, when well, she grabbed it to, like, bring it over, like, the little infrared the thing. Yeah. yeah, she, like, squeezed the bag to, like, squish them on purpose. Well, that ain't the only thing. She was just being really mean. Who was it? I don't know her name, but... Did you get your EC? I, I can't find it. Cause I'm I not even sure she gave me one, huh? Where would she put it if she began the one? She probably put it in the bag. Oh, I threw this out already. She didn't hand it to you. If she doesn't, they do you. She don't put them in the bag unless you ask them to. Well, she didn't hand you anything. She uh, probably I, didn't want to give you it because of the way she was behaving. I was what? afraid to look in the eye after that because she was being real mean. And when were you in here? I was in there, I would say about six hours ago. Six hours ago? Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> Isn't it ironic? That's what she's thinking. Such cleverness in Hello? Christianity. Yeah, we're here. Okay, hang on. Okay. That was Greg, can I help you? Hello, Greg. Yes. What is, what is your title? Okay, we're calling to complain about a rude cashier that we had today. Okay. She, she, she didn't even want to make eye contact with us. She didn't say two words to us. She's just running the things on the scanner, and she's banging things around. She grabs um, uh, my grandma's potato chips, and she squeezes the bag on purpose. Now she's running it over the, the little infrared thing. You know what I mean? Okay. And it looked to me like it was on purpose, too, because Mom can't drive. I had to give her a ride to the store. So I was with her, and I was a witness to the whole thing. And I have her on the line, too, if you need, if you need to speak to her. Uh, she can give you a description and everything. Okay, um, what did the cashier look like? Uh, she was kind of heavy set, and she had uh, dark hair. Okay. Uh, do you have your receipt? Uh, no, we were uh, just talking about this. We're thinking now that she didn't probably didn't give us a receipt because her name was on there, and she didn't want us to know who she was. So she wasn't wearing a name badge, either. Okay. All right, um... I apologize about that. If you want to just bring that, uh, your product back, we'll refund it for you. We'll give you a new bag. We're not so worried about the chips because Mom smashes them up before she eats them anyway because her teeth aren't all that good. Okay. But um, is there any way we could go in there and, like, pick her out from the lineup? Um, you're welcome to come in anytime you want. Um, what would be a good a good time for you, Grandma? Uh, I don't really know. A- anytime is good for me. I'm not going to complain if you're giving me a ride. I'm not going to complain about the time convenience. What time was this, ma'am, that you came in? Well, this was about uh, six hours ago. Uh, six hours ago. That cash is probably gone by now. Well, maybe you know who it is by what aisle we were at. We were at number five. Uh, this, this, this is hard to tell. <laughs> Register five? I think so. I don't think she was mad at us in particular. She just seemed mad in general. Like maybe she got in trouble or yelled at or, or something. Something was going on in her life that she was bringing to work. Okay. Anyway, she was heavy set. She had dark hair. Her eyes was like staring in the pure evil. Okay, well, I find out about that. Um, if you'd like us to uh, refund you the money for your product, we will. And we'll take a look at the... Do you want me to bring the, the chips in as uh, evidence? Um, no, that's not necessary. I mean, if you just want us to replace them, we'll replace it for you. It's just up to you, whatever you want us to do. All right, then. So I have to leave the chips here. You're just going to give me another bag? Uh, well, just bring me the empty packet then if you want to do that. All right? All right. Okay, we'll stop in tomorrow sometime after the church. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. Have you guys seen The Passion of the Christ yet? Oh. You cracked me up with that pure evil. <laughs> Her eyes are like a pinch of pure evil. Huh? I have it. Uh, I mean, Dave. No, not yet. I want to see it, but I don't want to pay for it. And I hate movies with subtitles. Want to call up, uh... You know the movie is entirely in Latin and Arabic? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Arabic. 
No, Aramaic. Oh. It's a dead I language. I downloaded it. It's pretty clear. You downloaded it? Yeah. Is it bad? I didn't watch the movie yet, it? but I, I skipped through it to see how clear it was. And mm-hmm. Every time I skipped, it was blood, blood, and more blood. Yeah. I mean, throughout the whole movie. Yes, I haven't seen it yet, but supposedly it's, it's the bloodiest movie in ages. I mean, yeah, I mean, this guy needed a blood transfusion the last three hours. If this guy was in, um, if, if these scenes were in Friday the 13th, there's no way it would happen without being rated MC-17. No way. Want to call up uh, David Williams? I say, what's the point? Because they're just going to stay on the line and, and be stupid yeah. for a half hour. It's entertaining, though. Let's talk about random shit. <laughs> okay, you dial. <laughs> You know how when we call them, we hear that beep, beep, beep of them recording us? What? You know how when we call, every once in a while, you hear a beep of them recording us? No, I never hear it. Yeah, I do. Never mind it. <laughs> listen to the old messages. They record us now. Mm. Well, you know what? I, I think I'm going to wrap up the show. Really? It's like 1.30 and... I don't know. I'm not having good luck with numbers and shit tonight. We got a couple funny ones in there. We gotta finish it off with a bang. We gotta call someone. Okay, one last call. Who, who call some you? random, random thing. Okay, um, Sally, I'm gonna call Dave, my pot dealer, and why, why don't you accuse him of selling you some bad dope? <laughs> T- tell him that you you paid for high test and you think you got swag. Because it'll be funny to hear Sally say swag. <laughs> I don't think I can remember that. You want to do that? Or even pronounce it as Sally. What? So I, don't think, I don't think I can remember that. Or pronounce it as Sally. Go ahead, say swag. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you should <have> try. Swag? Go ahead, try. <laughs> or, okay, say dirt weed. Say what? Dirt weed. <laughs> Want me to do it? As James. He said that we remember me, so I'm going to retire, though. Well, no, if you call us Sally, say, I'm, I have my grandson get it for me. Yeah, and you still with us some bad shit. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to do about it? So freak him out. He's paranoid enough as it is. <laughs> is he the one I call with the drum thing? What? The drummer for the band. I really <laughs> He hasn't been busted yet. He sounds like some, like, 15-year-old black kid. Like some wannabe. I don't know. No, he's, he's like, my age. Living in my parents' basement. Yeah. You know what? Maybe that's a bad idea. Like KDK parent calls together with the URL, you know? 
And then he'll go and listen to the old shows where we prank him. <laughs> I don't know, he was uh, calling URLs ULRs. <laughs> What's that? He was referring to like website URLs as uh, ULRs. Oh, really? Twitter. Well, that's the way the Brown Road Beams told him. Brown Road Beams. Okay, take it easy, man. Thank you all for listening. Yeah. And I'll, I'll talk to you guys next week, hopefully. All right. Okay, all right. bye-bye. Oh, well. Sometimes it just happens this way. You just... Well, we did get a bunch of funny prank calls off, but it took a lot of dead numbers to get to them. Thanks to everyone who contributed numbers tonight. I had a ton, I had a shit ton of numbers come in tonight. A word I learned from Zach, shit ton. I had a shit ton of numbers come in. And, of course, I only got to a small handful of them. So, if you want, cut and paste them to a Word document and cut and paste them back to me next week. And uh, we'll give it another go. We'll give it another try. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to mention while I'm before I end the program here. But I think that's it. My voice is getting all scratchy. But I'm going to go drink myself some beers and hang out on Yahoo. If anybody else wants to hang out on Yahoo, um, you can add me to your buddy list, KDK Prank Calls, and then click on Join User and Chat, and you'll be able to follow me in to, uh, to go bother Pindar later, maybe. I don't know. I'll be hanging out in our own chat room for a little while at kdkprankcalls.com click on the chat room you can come in there and talk to me after the program if you wish <sighs> anyway thank you all for listening I love you all tune in again next week Saturday 10pm Eastern Standard Time keep listening to Ted Web. oh you know what that reminds me I forgot the plug of course you should check out my site hundreds and hundreds of prank calls and videos and even videos with naked female boobies in it so check out kdkprankcalls.com. <clears throat> AtlanticDimensions.com is the website for Aaron, whom we were just on the phone with, doing the Sally voice. You'll find the, fo- the, the calls of Sally and Chuck up there. Also, don't forget to check out ComedyThinkTank.com, the website for Zachary B., formerly of CollegeSucks.org. I know it's all very confusing, and it's about to get worse, because if you want to listen to the prank calls from Toxic... ComedyThinkTank.com and click on what happened to CollegeSucks.org and click on Hosted Pranks. And if that hasn't confused you by now, you can listen to some funny prank calls. Anyway, keep listening to Ted Webb. Listen to Radio Prank. I'm out of here. Love you all. Stay beautiful. See you again next week. We got the clothes to go. That's it for tonight. Be back again tomorrow night. But that bushy tail is gonna suck it to you tomorrow, baby. I'll move your picture. I'll move your picture. From my wall. From my wall. Cause I'm from my wall. And I'll replace them. Both on the 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 And I'll replace them. Everyone. So so
I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you, too. I'll teach you to drop this and turn my head. Without you. No, that one. Nothing seems the same. Without the animal, nothing's the same. Nothing's the same. So I'll wait. And I'll wait. Until you're home. Until you're home. Again, I love you. Again. As I said before, I love you. But I'm all alone. But I'm all alone. I'm all alone. Can I see it again tomorrow night, baby? Uh, tomorrow. Until tomorrow, I love you so much. I love you more. I'm so blue. Bye. I'm blue. Goodbye. Because nothing, nothing, oh, but oh, nothing can take the place, the place of you, baby. Thank you all for listening. I love you all. Tune in again next week. Stay beautiful.